Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering, to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. Back in 2020, I wrote an article for The Motley Fool. The title was The Oil Stock Subsector That Turned $10,000 Into 77 Bucks. Offshore oil drilling absolutely eviscerated a lot of investors, myself included. But I'm here to tell you there is an indicator that says it is time to go bargain hunting in offshore drillers again. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering, and I've got Tyler Crow here with me. Tyler has suffered through the wars of the offshore oil drillers himself, but he agrees. And we're going to talk about those indicators right here. Hey, Tyler. Jason, we are on the other side, and it is time to talk about offshore rigs again. We go back to 2014, oil had gone through a period of well over $100 a barrel for longer than two years before just falling off a cliff beginning in July 2014, bottoming about a year and a half later in the 30s before starting to recover, but really staying at a protracted low price for multiple years. And along the way, the offshore oil drilling subsector basically dried up. And then you combine this with the pandemic and most of the industry went bankrupt. Yeah, right around 2018, 2019, we started to see a slight tick up in development and exploration activity. We thought, oh, we've really hit the bottom here. And all these companies that had not been investing for years were all of a sudden, oh, we actually need to start looking for oil again. Our reserve base of potential reserves is starting to look a little thin. And so we started to see a tick up then. And then, like you said, the pandemic hit. And they're like, well, so much for that. I'm pretty certain the Transocean was the only yep. publicly traded offshore oil driller that did not go through bankruptcy. And we saw some, like Sea Drill, went through bankruptcy. Go through multiple rounds. Twice within about a year and a half. The thing that killed the industry was they still had all the debt to service, right? Even though they had yep. retired a lot of vessels and dropped that cost, they still owed a lot of people a lot of money. But everything that's happened, but that brings us back to where we are today, Tyler. With, we should hope so, because the pitch we just made for this is not sounding good right now, Jason. It's a cautionary tale. But I think the important thing is the lesson to learn is something like the pandemic. That's an uncontrollable. And the lesson to learn there is when you're a highly leveraged, highly cyclical business with very high operating costs and an event happens and you don't have the liquidity to be able to get through it, you go through a bankruptcy process and you emerge on the other side in a better financial, better competitive situation. And that's where we are. Yeah. And this is what I think makes this a little bit more attractive these days is because it's not just one player, the entire industry more or less went through a capital restructuring. A large portion of them are either debt-free or have net cash or their debt obligations are a fraction of what they were. I want to talk about the few that we like. There's a couple that I bought and some that you have recently bought too, but I want to talk about that indicator first before we lose people. Yep. The thing that makes it really attractive looking forward and why this might be the time to really explore buying some of these. So the one you want to watch is day rates. They're typically signed for a really long time. A lot of the rigs that are currently employed are on old contracts that are worth considerably less than the current contract rates. I'm looking at S&P commodities charts right now. And it, as of April of 2023, the day rates for these advanced ships that most of the drilling is done, you know, drill ships that can do more than 7,500 feet of water uh, underneath it to do drilling. They're currently getting day rates right around $425,000 per day. And these are numbers that we saw back in 2014, right? Like, we're, like we're you nine, said. We're nine years removed from the last time we were consistently seeing long-term contracts for these floating vessels signed at this sort of rate. Exactly. Nine years. It's been nine years. Like you said, during all these restructurings, about half of the offshore drilling fleet was sent to the scrapyard. It, they just don't exist anymore because they're just the demand wasn't there. And because it's such a smaller fleet now, as these as companies want to start drilling again, it doesn't take as much for the demand to be really tight. And if we look right now, the total amount of fleet available around the world has a utilization rate of about 85 percent. So. You look at that and you say the market is getting much tighter. The pricing is increasing. That looks like a very good time that when these companies start to sign new contracts, it's going to look really good. Producers are looking to drill. So that's really important. So what are the companies that you are interested in that have the vessels that are capable to take advantage of those higher day rates? I've had a legacy position in Transocean that's, that 
stuck around through thick and thin. But the one I've been buying and the one that has taken up a larger position in my portfolio is Noble Corporation. They can offshore drill fleet it has one of the more advanced ones these days. And it, probably the most attractive quality for this particular one, aside from strong balance sheet, is it has a very tight relationship with Exxon Mobil in the offshore Guyana formation that Exxon Mobil found a few years ago, which is, has been one of the best offshore oil and gas finds in like the 21st century. And I think it has at least four or five of its ships in that particular basin. It's likely going to see even more come on because Exxon continues to ramp up activity in this particular formation because it has been so lucrative and so attractive to them and very manageable debt situation, but no new rigs coming. So it doesn't have a lot of spending obligations coming its way other than we'll pay down this debt and buy back stock. So because of that, and with its contracts coming due in the next two to three years, but a lot of those legacy contracts rolling over into these new ones that we're seeing these days at 425, it's a very attractive position to be in. And I, I think Noble is going to be one of the bigger winners. I've actually acquired a little bit of Noble recently as well, partly, uh, Tyler, based on conversations with you, but I've also recently added Valaris to my portfolio. It's one that I've mentioned before in other videos and on our podcast. I want to talk about why. So this is, again, this is one of the legacy when goes back to Atwood Oceanics and Rowan and Insco, or like all these companies that all merged together, made a stronger business, but I think there's like into, six more if you total them all right? together. It's pretty substantial. And the interesting thing now is that having sweated off a lot of those assets, gone through chapter 11 and reemerged, it actually has maybe, depending on how you measure it, maybe the largest advanced fleet um, on the water. It's pretty impressive, particularly when you add some of its new builds that it has lined up to take possession in the next few years, it has really advanced fleet. So the timing that killed it last time and forced these companies to, to go through bankruptcy and wipe that investors, it, the timing is really good for it right now. The, and you talked about with Noble, with that balance sheet strength, that's another thing that Valaris also has, but has a net cash position that's likely to change. It's probably within the next year, it's probably going to be net debt because it is going to take possession of some of those new builds, but it's bringing them online at just about as ideal of a time as it possibly could, because they're going to be really productive economic engines at the time. Again, if you look at the operating statement, it's not beautiful. It's not just kicking out gushing cash, but it is generating solid operating profit and solid operating cash flow. And as we see those day rates, Tyler, that indicator that we were talking about, as we see those continue to potentially even accelerate, because you, you mentioned that 425 is the average for those advanced floaters. We've seen some more in the 460 range plus startup costs on top of that, right? So we're starting to really approach some super profitable rates. And I think that means that right now is a really compelling time to be looking at these. Again, Transocean, we talked about it. It's one you and I both own. Not a bad business to own, very well run, but I agree with you. I think Noble, and in my case, I think Valaris too, I think those are really attractive right now.